Hey guys welcome back to my channel this is a story of what if Madara reveals himself to be Naruto's grandfather. He infused both his cells and Hashirama's cells into Naruto. Naruto becomes strong as a result, awakening the Sharingan and later the Rinnegan. Before we start thank you for the support it really means a lot to me don't forget to subscribe and leave like and check the description for the creator of this great fanfic and support them for making this fanfic and now let us start. Disclaimer. I do not own Naruto Chapter 20 Kanahagakur it has been some time since she last came here. The last time she came here was when she was looking for help during the civil war in her homeland. The Sandame Hokage was still alive by that time. She had come happy knowing that the man was peaceful and would help them. But she had gone back home with a gloomy and angry face. The old senile bastard had refused to over her help. Even if the man had given her a sanin to help them, it would have been something. But he gave away nothing. She may never like the old man for what he did. He had just stood and watched in the sidelines while its citizens bathed Kiri in blood. Moreover, he, Hiruzen who proclaimed to be a peaceful man merely stood far away and watched. The village had enough military power to help but he did not and yet he continued to call himself a man peace. Well that was the past now, she had returned. Only because of a certain blonde haired Uchiha. He saved her village. He may have had his reasons, but that did not change the fact that he had saved them. His taking part in their civil war saved many of her men who would have died during the war. He had managed some incredible feats that she never thought anyone could reach. His power was something else. It just saddened her that he chose not to use his power for bringing the world together. If she had his power, she would have used it to bring peace to the world. The blonde did not seem to care about peace. He seemed to be only interested in, dancing, that is what his power was used for. Well at least he was not running around the world forcing other villages to bow before the might of Konoha. She had a question though, how long would he stay low? He was still young, he could still grow stronger than he was now. What would happen if he became stronger than he is now? Would he simply sit down and watch the world? The problem with being powerful is that you sometimes get bored with lack of challenges. That is when many start to lose it. With no challengers, it is easy to start trouble just to look for a challenge. She only hoped that something like that did not happen. It would be a shame if it did. She was happy, though, to be here. She could get to see Naruto. She had been longing to see him again. True to his word, he never did return to Kiri. He was not afraid to tell her that. Well, according to reports he was still cooped inside Kanahagakur. This meant that she would get the chance to see him inside his home. A smile slipped through her face at the thought. There also the fact that should everything go her way, Kiri would have a strong ally. Konoha was still the strongest amongst the hidden villages. If she gets Konoha to ally with her, she could also get Sunagakur. The sand and the hidden leaf were allies and since the installation of a new case cage, the relationship between the two villages has been nothing but good. Mei Sama, Ao said snapping Mei out of her thoughts. We should move ahead, he said. Mei was in her Mizukage robes, it was the preferred choice since she was going to a meeting like this one. She had also to dress as Mizukage, that way she could look professional. Let's go, she said with a nod. She looked at Chojuro. The young shinobi had become nervous. It's all right Chojuro, everything will be all right, she said confidently. I I hope so Mizukage sama Chojuro said as they began to walk towards the Hokage Tower. Their presence of course brought whispers around everyone who saw them. But they did not mind them, they merely continued towards the Hokage Tower. This place has not changed at all, May stated as she looked around the village. It still looked the same as it did when she had come here a few years ago. Yes, it has not, Ao said in agreement. It is surprising though given the invasion that occurred three years ago, the sound, sand invasion had done some damage to the village. He would have thought that while recovering from the damage, they would have changed some things. There was not much damage done though, May pointed out. According to reports, the only buildings that suffered damage were the ones located near the walls where Orochimaru's summons started their attack. It is still a surprise though, Ao said. He was not disagreeing with Mei. It was just a surprise that the village did not change after an invasion by two villages had occurred in this village. The three continued to walk in silence towards the Hokage Tower. The Anbu Tsunade sent had already gone to report of the safe arrival of the Mizukage. 
Another squad of Anbu was watching from the shadows to ensure that nothing happened to Mei. It would not be good for the image of Konoha should someone attack her. This would also cause troubles between the two villages. Konoha was still at full power. Any war breaking between the two villages would surely end in Konoha slaughtering Kiri. But that did not mean that they would not do anything to avoid a war. Sometimes it was better to avoid conflicts. The world has already seen many wars, it is best that another did not break out, especially when it could be avoided. War was never pleasant to anyone. The three finally reached the Hokage Tower and were led to Tsunade's office by a Chunin who was waiting for them at the entrance of the tower. It amused Mei how each cage was always found in the tallest building in a village. If she wanted to, she would change to make her tower look smaller. But that should not be her worries. They were still rebuilding the village, she had to worry about that. Enter, they heard as the Chunin knocked at Tsunade's door. The Chunin only opened the door in motion for them to step in. When they got in, he closed the door behind him and left. Tsunade stood up from her seat as a sign of respect as the Mazukage entered. I trust your travels were pleasant, she said as Mei drew closer to her desk with her bodyguards flanking both her sides. The younger cage smiled, it was pleasant, she said while still standing. These two were the only female cages to in the elemental nations. Tsunade was the first woman to become a cage while Mei became the second. Please, sit down, the blonde Hokage stated as she too sat down. As told, Mei sat down on a chair in front of Tsunade's desk. This office too has not changed, Mei said looking around the room. I did not change anything when I took over as Godaim, Tsunade said adopting a calm look on her face. Mei Turumi nodded. Thank you again for sending your Anbu for assist in our travels, she said. She had told the Anbus to tell Tsunade thank you when they neared the village. The Anbu were going to leave them since they had done their job. It was nothing, Tsunade said with a wave of her hand. We just could not let anything happen to you before we even begin our alliance talks, moreover, it would have looked like Konoha had planned for it to occur if something had happened to her while she has on her way here. I guess you were right. You and your men must be tired from your journey, Tsunade stated. That was what anyone would say in her position. They had been traveling for days now. I have already prepared a hotel for all of you for rest. That is highly appreciated, Mei said with a small smile. She could use some rest, but it was still noon. But of course if you want to take a look around the village, I can have someone show you, Tsunade stated. Most visitors would want to look around the village. It was like a customary thing to do for a visiting cage. That won't be necessary, we can find our way around the village, it was not like she would get lost. And she was not some baby that needed to be guided. Tsunade nodded. Just to warn you beforehand. You will have Anbu tailing you as you walk around, she said. They did that to ensure that nothing else happened. It was not a show of distrust. Mei smiled again. It is no bother, she said dismissively. We will have the meeting tomorrow morning after you have rested. I trust that you will be prepared during that time, Tsunade stated now adopting a look and tone of a leader. It is no problem. Is there anything else, before I show you your resting quarters? Mei nodded. Could you tell me where Naruto is? Tsunade raised a brow at the question but nodded nonetheless. Anbu, she called. And Anbu dropped beside her desk. Find me the location of Naruto. Hi. It was noon, Naruto was mostly at the Uchiha compound by this time. He always was there unless he was at his father's house. Those two places in the Hokage monument where the places one would look for Naruto. But he never went to the Hokage monument during day. As they waited for the Anbu to return, Tsunade spoke. Are you familiar with him? She asked quietly. Naruto had spent a few weeks in Kiri, she could guess that Mei had become familiar with him. But then again, this was Naruto. You could say that, Mei replied with a small smile. So I guess he was also impassive during his time at your village, Tsunade said after Mei had responded. She only said that because of the nature of Mei's answer. If she had become familiar with him then she would have just said yes. The Mizukage chuckled at Tsunade's words. He was, she said. Is he always like that even here? Yes, Tsunade replied. Well that is unless he is tormenting the elders. Sometimes I just want to punch him in the face because of it. Again, Mei chuckled, but Tsunade joined her. It's a little unnerving, especially when you smile at him and he just stares at you with an unreadable expression on his face. 
Tsunade nodded wholeheartedly. It was not pleasant when he did it. If she did not know any better, she could say that he belonged to Root. The blonde never showed emotions. It was like doing that was a sign of weakness to him. The only time I saw him with a happy look on his face was before the battle. He seemed really excited about it, May added. That was indeed true, and after the battle, all the happiness was gone like it had never been there before. You mean like smiling like everyone else? Tsunade asked, wanting to make sure she was hearing it correctly. Yes, May gave short answer to the question. So the only thing that excites him is a good fight. Is it just me or is there something wrong with that? Normal people became excited when something good and healthy happened. But Naruto was happy when he was going to slaughter hundreds of men. May shrugged, well, his attitude is what makes him Naruto, she said. Before Tsunade could reply the Anbu came back. Unlike last time, he did not kneel beside her desk. He went straight to her and whispered something to her before disappearing. The Godime sighed, Naruto is currently busy right now, she said. I guess you will see him tomorrow at the meeting or later on. A look flashed through Mei's face for a second, Tsunade noticed. Fine, the Godime Mizukage said. Come with me, I will show you your hotel. I need to get something to eat anyway, Tsunade mumbled the last part. Mei nodded to her guards and they followed Tsunade out of the office. Meanwhile for some reason, Naruto agreed to have lunch with Yugao. He would have preferred to continue with his training, but he found himself agreeing to the idea of lunch when the woman came to him while he was at the training ground. It was lunch anyway and he was bound to leave his training and get some food. His body needed all the energy he could give it. He never did miss a meal. But still, he had talked to her after their dinner two days ago before this. She had just appeared and offered to buy him lunch. She seemed happy about the idea of having lunch with him. Not that he actually bothered to look into that. It was just obvious by the look she had on her face. There was also the fact that for some reason he could not deny her. He liked her presence, it was not annoying. He could tolerate speaking with her. And for some reason, he enjoyed each time he had with her. He liked her for being a strong woman, he did not think there was anything more to that. Perhaps there were possibilities, but he did not bother to entertain them. He allowed mysteries to be mysteries, for now. Is it so bad? Yugao asked referring to the food they were eating. She had said they should get some dango, but Naruto did not seem to enjoy it. In fact, he only put one stick on his mouth and never put another one. Yes, Naruto replied flatly. This also does not satisfy my stomach. When I say lunch I want something that will please my stomach, he stated looking at the dango in disdain. How did someone call that food? He could not understand it. Perhaps he should not have even bothered to try to understand it. He needed something that would make his stomach happy. He needed strong food. At home, he would have prepared himself that something that was worthy of his time. You know, you could have at least pretended to enjoy it, Yugao said with a sigh. Most people would say it was good even though they did not think so, just to be polite. I could have, but I chose not to and never will pretend, Naruto said breaking any hope that Yugao had that he might actually one day pretend to like something when he did not. Just when I wanted to treat you with something you never experienced, Yugao said. Well she was not sad though. Fine, if it makes you happy we can go to Ikaraku, you used to love that place, she stated in a defeated tone. Naruto actually smiled at her. Finish up, he said. Yugao shook her head. If I am going to have ramen, I might as well leave this, she said. Naruto stood up and waited for her to do the same so they could leave to Ikaraku. He had not eaten ramen as some time. He did find the food enjoyable. The eating there would be like returning the favor to the Ikaraku. They had done much for him. Let's walk, Yugao said earning a blank look from Naruto. I know you don't like walking the village with the villagers looking at you with happy smiles. But I have never walked with you. I want to experience what it feels like to take a walk with you. What more requests do you have Yugao? Naruto asked as if he was ready to deliver any request she might have. Yugao smiled. Can we hold hands while we walk? She found herself surprised when she said that. She realized what people would say if they saw them walking together like that, but she did not care. No, Naruto replied turning away from her. Well, yay, he could refuse her. And the look on her face was somewhat priceless.
I am becoming much more comfortable with her, Naruto thought placing his right hand on his chest. Is it the heart? Have I developed some sort of feelings? He shook his head. The answers were for another time. Now was not the right time to be asking himself those questions. Son of a bitch. Yugao cursed within her head. He did it on purpose because he knew the picture it would paint. But that would not be a big deal because Naruto had already made it clear that he liked her. She also had already made it clear by her actions. Naruto knew that, but he was not going to work on hints. He would be patient until she can finally say it. He did not seem to be in a hurry to be in a relationship. She could guess that was the reason he had not pointed out that her actions mean that she likes him. That was cruel of him. But either way worked out for him. Perhaps she had made it too obvious too soon. She never hid that she liked him and Naruto did not hide it. But he was vocal about it, while she had not been. And unless she becomes vocal about it, Naruto would just continue to, torture, her by playing ignorant of her feelings. Cruel bastard. Sighing, Yuga looked up to Naruto and followed him closely from behind. She walked beside him and looked around the villagers. Do you not like walking around here because you think of murdering them all for what they did to you? Yugao was even more surprised, again, that she had asked such a question. Perhaps it was because of her mental turmoil. Luckily for her two things happened, Naruto simply looked at her with her raised brow, Anko called her name. She was relieved when Anko called her. That mean that she would have to forget about the question and Naruto did not seem like he was going to answer her anyway. Yugao Chan. Naruto turned to look at Anko and another woman, he recognized as Yuhikura and I. The latter was having a wide mischievous grin. Why did I have to meet her here with you? Yugao asked more to herself than to Naruto. Is there a problem? Well Anko acts, how could she put it in a way Naruto would understand? You will see, she said. Hello, Anko, Kuranai, Yugao greeted the two as Naruto remained quiet, not even seeming the slightest interested in joining the friendly meeting. So this is your boy toy, Anko said with a grin. She then walked closely to Naruto and stared him to the eyes. It was as if she was trying to scare him with a sick grin and narrowed eyes. The blonde though simply stared at her with a blank look. I remember you, Naruto said breaking the stalemate. Chunin exams three years ago. You were a proctor for the second test. Your methods of installing fear are quite pathetic though, the blonde noticed that Kurinai seemed to cringe at the mention of Chunin exams. Yugao decided to step in to avoid anything from happening. Okay, she said. Naruto you have met Anko. This is Kurinai, I am sure you know her as well. These two are my friends. Kurinai nodded a bit nervously at him. Chunin exams, preliminary rounds. I gave Kiba quite a beat down and you came to give me your peace of mind. Unfortunately I was not interested in it, Naruto stated reminding Kurinai of their past encounter. Something so trivial should not concern you, he said. Anko decided to take the spotlight again. So where are you going? Are you coming from a date? Yugao was quick to reply, no, we are just going to have some ramen just the two of us, she emphasized the two so that they could get the message. Anko waved her hand dismissively, you don't have to hide the fact that you don't want us on your little date, she said. Anko, let's go, Kurinai said a bit forcibly. Fine, the snake mistress said. I will see you tonight guys, Yugao said as she and Naruto prepared to live. Naruto spoke before they walked away. Anko, next time don't come to me so close while reeking of snakes. They remind me of Orochimaru and I dislike him, very much. Next time you come so close to me with that scent, you might end up not okay, he said turning around to leave. Is that a threat? Naruto merely gave Anko a blank look and walked away with Yugao. He was not going to answer such a question. He did not do threats. Anko was not someone he could trouble himself with. The scent of snakes reminded him of that cursed snakes, it made his blood boil. They finally arrived at the ramen bar. It was not much trouble. The villagers were looking at Naruto carefully though. He never did walk around them even when they lived inside the same village. It was a rare sight to see him walking, especially with a woman beside him. No one was making trouble though. They all stayed out of his way, but did so smiling at him. Well not everyone was smiling. Not that Naruto cared about it anyway. Ah Naruto, it has been long, Toiki said as the blonde Uchiha took a seat along with Yugao. Naruto smiled slightly, yes it had been, he answered. 
How have you been? You don't come here anymore, Toiki stated looking straight at Naruto. Sure the blonde has changed, but it did not hurt if he came more often than he did. I have been well, just a lot of work to do, the blonde answered calmly. How has business been? Good, Toiki replied with a small smile. If it was not good, then I would have closed, now wouldn't have I. I guess not. Toiki then turned to Yugao and smiled at her. So I guess you are the one who dragged him here, he said with a wink. Yugao smiled, yes, she said. Naruto may have wanted the ramen, but if she had not dragged him from his home, he would never have come here. She could take all the credit. It was just sad that Naruto did not react to it. Thank you for doing it. Naruto never comes here anymore, the old man stated. What can I get you? Yugao looked at Naruto like she wanted to see what he would order. But the blonde never looked at her back. She sighed, one bowl of pork ramen, she said. Toiki nodded and walked away. She was not surprised that he did not take Naruto's order. She could say since he once was a regular then he already knew what the blonde was going to eat. How long are you going to play this game? Naruto suddenly asked. Yugao knew what he was referring to. However, since he knew the answer, and was not doing anything about it, she would play along. She could be just as cruel as him. You are in no hurry so am I, she said like she did not care at all. Interesting, Naruto said seemingly amused by her answer. You are proving to be quite a woman Azuki Yugao, he said. That was the first time if she was not mistaken that Naruto said her family name. She liked it though that his view of her was increasing to a new light. As long as she played her cards right, she had him in her hands. Naruto would not bother to be looking for another woman, she knew that and was counting on it to be that way. But so far it was good. She had no competition in Naruto. She could go on to say that she was the only girl in his life. Just then, Ayame came back from the kitchen instead of Toiki. She gave Yugao her ramen while smiling. When she went to Naruto, she kept a blank expression. Hello Naruto, unlike most days, her tone was flat. Ayame, Naruto said with a raised brow at the tone of her voice and the blank expression she had. She stared at him unblinking for a few moments. Naruto was not willing to say anything because he knew that eventually she would say it was in her mind. Before you graduated from the academy, you spent more than three months away from us. When you finally decided to come, you promised something. That I would not disappear for some time without saying something to you, Naruto said remembering the promise. I thought you had forgotten, she said. Since you came back from your training, you don't come here anymore. Before Naruto could say anything, Yugao intervened. Naruto almost never leaves the Uchiha compound, she said. It was obvious that she was not done. Don't worry, Ayame, I will drag him here once in a week when he is inside the village. Ayam's expression changed in a flash. She smiled happily. Thank you, she said bowing her head towards Yugao. Then again turned to Naruto, it was nice seeing you again, Naruto. Likewise, Naruto responded digging in his bowl of miso ramen. The two then ate their ramen in comfortable silence. Neither were in a hurry to finish up the ramen. They savored it in the silence. Yugao then decided to speak, you understand how women think, but yet you choose not follow that understanding, why? Is that rhetorical? No, Yugao replied in a firm tone. Because I choose to do things my way. Abiding by my understanding of women would need me to, change. And I cannot do that. Yugao looked back as she saw heard a couple of voices. Your former, friends, Yugao stated looking at Naruto. I have already noticed them, Naruto responded without even looking at the group. He was surprised to see Sasuke with them though. So what are you going to do? Yugao asked knowing had no relations with anyone in the group except for Sasuke, as far as knew that is. Naruto simply gave her a look she knew had a raised brow. Are you going to just disappear? Do you have such a low opinion of me? Yugao gave Naruto a blank stare. Naruto, she begun calmly. The only time I have seen you excited is when you were going to slaughter hundreds of shinobi. From you past, you never enjoyed those people's company. To you they are like flies yapping this and that, and you have no interest in them nor hearing what they want to say. You are getting good at this, Naruto stated. However, I care not for what you have just said. I am who I am. When I questioned if you have a low opinion of me, I was referring to the fact that you were asking if I was going to run away from them. Who do you think I am? 
I am eating my ramen here, if I do not want them, I will tell them, go away, not run away. Oh, the purple-haired Anbu mouthed and kept quiet. Yo Naruto, a lazy voice of Nara Shikamaru called as the group of the Konoha One, whatever they call themselves, arrived at the ramen bar. Naruto turned around and looked at Shikamaru, Choji and then Sasuke, hello Shikamaru, I see you are still hanging out with children, that comment was referred to someone like Kiba who did not know when to grow up. The comment though was not well received as some felt offended. Who are you calling children? You, Naruto responded blankly then ignored Kiba. Then looked at Neji, at least some have grown, he said. Ah Rock Lee, I must spar with you sometimes and see how far you have grown. Last time you impressed me with your taijutsu skills. Lee could never be left speechless by the praise. He beamed up brightly. Who would not like to be praised by Uchiha Naruto after hearing his exploits in Kiri? But the blonde was not waiting to hear Lee yell his youth nonsense. He simply turned to Sasuke. He was beside Ino. I wanted to speak with Shikamaru about the training program for the military force, I wanted him to change a few things on the files you gave me. But they forced me to join them, Sasuke answered the unasked question. He could see that Naruto had asked the question by the look he was giving them. I see you are still the same troublesome blonde, Shikamaru stated now being given his opportunity to speak. Were you expecting something else different? No, Shikamaru replied shaking his head lazily. He never expected anything to change with the blonde. Hey Naruto, why don't you come with us, we are going to hang out together and catch up, Sakura suggested with a small smile. No, there was no reason given why. It was a firm reply that left Sakura mute. Oh now because you are the Uchiha head clan and hero of Kiri, and are on a date, you think you are all better than us, an angry voice of Kiba yelled as Hinata tried to calm him down. Naruto turned around going back to his ramen ignoring Kiba. He did not want to be dragged into petty arguments. Of course this seemed to infuriate Kiba. Don't you dare ignore me, bastard, no one seemed to be willing to quiet the Inazuka clan air. You are loud, the blonde said. Perhaps if you were not so loud I would have given the idea a thought. Naruto responded not even looking back at Kiba. Sasuke after this thing, come back at the compound with Shikamaru I have some matters to deal with him. Sasuke nodded with a shrug of his shoulders. That bastard. You know Naruto, you don't have to be so cold, Yugao said. Um, I refused the offer because I was not interested. I explained to Kiba why I was not responding to his petty outburst, Naruto stated looking straight at Yugao. How do you call that being cold? Yugao fell silent, not willing to say anything further. Come on guys let us go, Shikamaru stated not wanting trouble to start. For sure in Naruto's own explanation, nothing is wrong with the picture. The group then walked away from the ramen stand. Is that your way of telling them to go away? Yugao felt herself compelled to question. No, Naruto replied. Sakura knows that I have never been interested in anything she does, since we left the academy. Kiba was just being childish. The others were not so much bothered because they know I have never been interested in them. And besides, I prefer being here with you than with them. I guess you are right, Yugao said with a sigh. My ramen has become cold. It was then that she realized what Naruto had actually said. Normally, he would not have said something like that, but he did. She was happy that he had said he preferred being in her presence the group that just left. Yugao looked at Naruto carefully. She was having more effect on him than she had thought. Perhaps he was capable of changing. Naruto, she said in a calm tone. Why don't you like people close to you? Naruto looked at Yugao straight into her eyes. I have no need for petty affections, don't you believe that? Yugao shook her head. I am the only person who is close to you and can understand you in this village. I know you don't care about most things, and that you deny yourself many things because they will get in the way, she paused for a moment. You are so absorbed in your goals that you discard everything else. Have you ever asked yourself this questions, what will you do when you have completed your goals? Who will you be with if you push everyone away from you? Will you survive being alone? Naruto looked away from Yugao and stared at his cold ramen. His heart was acting up again. He did not like it. True. He had never asked himself those kind of questions. But they were not important, he would deal with it after everything was completed. In his younger days, he felt despair, loneliness, hopeless. He had felt all those things. They saddened him greatly. 
but he never wanted to experience those things again. It was why he did enough to never speak about the things of the past. His past was not pleasing, hence his dislike of the things of the past. He had made his mother a promise. But now was not the right time. It was also not the time for him to have such thoughts. He shook his head. You may be right Yugao, Naruto said calmly. Later that day, the hideout, the day did not have much for him to do. It was still pleasant. He had managed to complete some of his training even with Yugao's interference. Well he could not exactly call it that, it was lunch after all. Still he had to move out of Konoha soon. The only place he had been visiting were the hideout and dragon land. That did not count. It all still counted as being inside of Konoha. Perhaps a mission would do him good. He could find some perfect test subjects for testing his jutsu. Naruto smiled at the thought. He could not wait to test his jutsu. Akatsuki were on their move, it was not going to be later that Obito would come before him and offer him some petty threats or simply just show up to reveal pathetic excuse for existence. The days were numbered though. He would join Rin in the afterworld. How is your body holding up? Zetsu asked looking straight at Naruto. So far it has been holding up far better than I thought, Naruto answered taking a seat. His seat was like a throne. It was inside the room Madara used while he was still synchronized with the ghetto Mazo. But right now, it was no longer inside the hideout. It disappeared ever since Nagato started summoning it. He figured it must be taking refuge inside one of Akatsuki hideouts. But I have two problems, he added with a rather serious look on his face. 2. Zetsu asked with a curious look on his face. Naruto nodded. The second problem is worrying, but I will have to find a permanent solution soon. It is targeting the cells, nerves in my body. More importantly, it seems to act up when I use my Keke Genkais. My body has become used to having my Sharingan activated, but when I use the M's and any of its abilities, it starts shut all the doors that enable me to use my bloodlines. This makes it difficult to use then and brings me large amounts of pain. Mokuten has become difficult and uses more chakra. Amaterasu hurts my eyes severely. Susanoo feels like it's crushing my body. And I can no longer maintain it for longer periods. Should these problems continue unsolved I will lose all my bloodlines. The first problem is not so much worrying since I know I can solve it. At first when I used much more chakra for s rank jutsus, my chakra system seemed to take some damage. If I had not found a solution to that quickly, my chakra system would have been leaking chakra throughout my body, this would make it uncontrollable. For someone who has large pools of chakra, unstable chakra inside my body would have proved disastrous. Zetsu whistled. Do you think he planned it all? Yes, Naruto responded with a nod. I think that the purpose of the poisoner virus was to destroy my chakra system so that I would not be able to use it. But because of the secrets of my body, that purpose was altered. For someone like you who is proud of his power, if you were to lose it all, you would never be able to survive, Zetsu stated. But because the destruction of my chakra system has been delayed, the virus seemed to have another target, making sure I never use my blood lines. It seems like it was created that way. So if you dealt with the first problem, if the virus would attack something. Either way you are screwed. It appears so, Naruto stated. He had this calm look on his face as if this not a serious matter. Anyone would be definitely freaked out by this. So how long do you have? I don't know, it's unpredictable. The medicine I am using now is fighting, but it seems to be losing strength. It is like the virus is adapting to it, Naruto sighed placing his hand under his chin. Should anything happen, you will have to kill me. That is if I don't die immaturely. Zetsu was silent trying to decipher what Naruto was saying to him. The blonde then decided to explain. Although I would not do this, my existence has to continue until I complete my objectives. You will have to make Nagato use the Rinne Tensai to revive me. I don't care how you make him do it. But I still want him alive. My body should be rejuvenated in my rebirth. Zetsu nodded with a grin. Why do you want Nagato alive? I want to fight against the so-called God of Aim. And I want to see the power of the Rinnegan. It is only a matter of time before I awaken my own eyes. I want to see what they can do. But in his current state, Nagato won't be much of a challenge. Nagato was immobile and Naruto would not like to fight with puppets. Not really, Naruto said earning a look from Zetsu. 
Obito will think of something to return Nagato to the state he was before synchronizing with the Ghetto Mazo. Do you think Obito would give Nagato more power than he has now, even when he plans to take your grandfather's Rinnegan from him? He will because it works better for him. If Nagato is given his mobility back, he will prove more of a challenge to me. Either he loses or defeats me, it works better for him. But in his current state, it cannot work better for him, Naruto explained. If both you and Nagato fight in an even battle, you will both tire each other out. Obito can then come and finish things because both of you will be weak. If you do defeat Nagato, he will come and take advantage of your weakened state. If it is Nagato who is victorious, he will do the same, Zetsu realized. Do you really think he will do it? Obito will do anything to make sure that the plan succeeds so he can live with Rin. Everything is because of Rin. Why does he not just get Nagato to bring her back with the Rinnegan? That would complicate things. Even he knows that she will not be happy. Also Obito is technically no longer human because how he survived. Rin would not want that. He also hates this world and sees it as a fake. He refuses reality and chooses to believe in the world of dreams he wants to create, a world he will be the supreme ruler, where everything will go his way. Zetsu nodded. So those matters are all solved, he said. Yes, Naruto agreed. How are things at Oto? They are going well. Your palace is completed, and a few buildings only remain. That woman is doing things well, Zetsu reported with a smile. I was right to choose her, Naruto said. She has told me that there will be a lack of experienced medics. I have thought of that, Naruto replied. Tsunade has been training medics for the past three years. But currently Shizune and Sakura do those duties. I cannot send someone to be trained now, there is no time for that. You plan to rob Tsunade of her graduates. There are two women at the Konoha hospital who have trained under Tsunade I have been looked at. They are very talented in medical ninjutsu. You are going to consume Gurin's chakra and take her form and persuade them to join Oto. How? There is no experienced medic that will refuse to head a hospital, especially like the one built in Oto. You just have to be persuasive. Zetsu nodded. Who are they? You will know them when we are at Konoha. I will inform Gurin about it so that she is not surprised when they arrive, he paused for a moment. The Suchikage has sent his granddaughter to Oto. Naruto smiled. The old fool is entering the play, he was amused by this. Let us allow him to dance around for now. I have to brutally murder Obito first. Aren't you just going to kill him? No, it has to be painful, Naruto said. But he was not going to elaborate any further. Zetsu, don't do anything I would not do. Let the Suchikage play for now, I do not want him knowing anything. Zetsu sighed in disappointment. Well he would get his fun after Obito is murdered. He would just have to be patient. He did good by telling Gurin to reveal nothing to Kuritsuchi. Is there anything else? Didera and Sasori should be arriving at Suna by tomorrow night. Sasunagakur will be attacked by N tomorrow and if someone does not intervene, they will capture Gara. Naruto stated rubbing his head. This was troublesome. Tomorrow was a council meeting he had to attend. Sure he would rather fight than sit at the council meetings, but in this case he would sit down. You are not going to save the case cage. Zetsu asked with a curious expression on his face. No, Naruto responded shortly. That was a surprise. Naruto seemed to value of the life of a Jinchuriki and he had spared Gara's life during the invasion. He could have killed him like he did to anyone he fights with seriously but chose not to because the case cage was a Jinchuriki like he had been, like his mother. As far as he knew, Naruto would save a Jinchurikis if he could or if he had nothing against the human sacrifice. But the blonde had nothing with Gara nor Sunagakur. You surprise me, Zetsu stated but then something clicked inside his head. Oh, he mouthed. I dislike the desert, the blonde said. I refuse to fight a man who fights with puppets. Didera also only does fireworks, something like that does not interest me. So you are just going to leave it as it is, it would be a surprise if he said he was going to leave it as it was. No, Naruto said shaking his head slightly. He activated his M's, I have to spend much time with my M's activated now. For the next days, I will have it activated always so my body can adapt. Now the blonde had gone out of topic. To answer your question, this gives a chance to test Sunna's strength. If they cannot repel a fireworks user and a puppeteer, then they are weaker than I believe them to be. 
You do realize that there is a high probability that they can succeed in capturing Gara. Yes, that is why to be on the safe side you will absorb some of my chakra and go to Suna to give Gara a copy of the file we have on Didera and Sasori. I thought you gave Jiraiya that file. Should he not have already given it to him? Zetsu questioned. The file I gave Jiraiya did not contain everything, it only had abilities. But the one we have has abilities and how to counter them. I actually thought you gave Jiraiya everything. Naruto shook his head. If they fail given all that, then Suna should be stripped of its position as one of the five great hidden villages. I will go and see Gara tomorrow, Zetsu stated. Good, Naruto said standing up from his seat. I will have to retreat back to the compound. Record the battle that is to take place tomorrow in Suna. I am interested in how strong Gara has become. Without saying another word or waiting for Zetsu to respond, Naruto walked away. The following day council chambers, it was still early in the morning, but Tsunade had decided to first start with the meeting so that she could look ahead to other things during the day. She did not think that the meeting would take much time. They had already discussed much in the proposal for an alliance. She was not going to make things difficult for the Mizukage. She was happy that everyone had come in all good moods. Naruto had not made a fuss when being called for the meeting. In fact, her Anbu informed her that he seemed to have been already waiting for it. She looked at him for a moment. He was wearing black, as always. She noticed that he did not often wear his forehead protector. He was not wearing it even now. He also looked calm and only smiled once when May greeted him. His eyes were also different. Everyone seemed to notice it. She could say that it was his Mangekyu. It was a surprise to see him with it activated, he always had the Sharingan activated not the Mangekyu. Thinking of it, she had never seen his, real, eyes before. Ever since she came back to the village, he had always had his Sharingan activated. She would not say that he was just showing off. He seemed to be comfortable with it activated. He was also not making much noise. Tsunade sighed, she just hoped that Kaharu did not start her nonsense even today. Danzo was awake, they had to execute him by today. He would not be given any chance to defend himself. There was nothing to defend. He was deemed guilty and there was no appeal to that decree. He was as good as dead. The godime was happy that Konoha was moving on. They had Suna now they would be having Kiri, that is if things go their way. Mei looked at Naruto with a small smile. He still looked the same as he was when he left Kiri. She could not wait to chat with him though. She had been longing for a day like this to come since he left her. She remembered, he kissed her back when she had kissed him. That meant much to her. Had he not done it, it would have been saddening. Tsunade cleared her throat to get everyone's attention. Since we are all present, we can begin this meeting, the godime said in Hokage mode. You are all aware that we came here to hear Mizuka Jdano's proposal for an alliance. I won't say much but I will give her the time. Before May could even speak, Kaharu spoke receiving a glare from Tsunade. But she shrugged it off and spoke, before we even listen to anything, we must know what we will gain from allying with your village, Mizukage sama May took no offense in it. To be honest Kiri does not have much to offer since we have just recovered from a civil war and currently we are still recovering. You having said that tells me that Kiri will the only one benefiting should we form an alliance. You did not allow me to finish, May responded with a calm look on her face. Kiri may be recovering from a civil war, but our land is rich in herbs of all kinds that I am sure will be useful to Konoha. An alliance with Kiri can also benefit Konoha with a bloodline since Kiri is blessed with so many. We have found a few surviving members of the Kagaya and Yuki clan. When we have stabilized the village, Konoha can benefit with a member of either clan. There was some silence, but Kaharu broke it again. Is that all? Again, May merely smiled at the elder. Think of it as a long-term investment. When Kiri does recover you will be having another strong ally to aid you in times of trouble. This is also my way of saying thank you to Naruto, to Konoha, for freeing my village. Then you should have no demands since our shinobi is the one that freed your village. Tsunade eyed Naruto. He did not seem like he was going to speak anytime soon. Of course they were just going to listen to May's offer then send away while they debate it. But still, she thought he would say something. He always had something to say. You have said enough Kaharu, Tsunade said with a glare at the elder. What you have brought to the table is acceptable, I don't know if the others agree with me, 
but I we will discuss that later on, she paused for a moment. What are your demands? I only request that Konoha aid us should we need assistance, give us 24% of the missions that are to be completed near the land of water, if possible help us recover. And I will not sign anything unless I have Naruto's hand in marriage. What? A screeching voice yelled. We cannot give you the Sharingan. I did not say I want the Sharingan. But since you also don't want with you Keke Jenke, I think I will also withdraw my offer to give you any, may stated in a rather serious tone. I only want a marriage with Naruto and you must not forget that I am a wielder of two bloodlines. Rare bloodlines for that matter. Tsunade again looked at Naruto, as did most of the council members when they heard of May's offer of marriage. Surprisingly, he said nothing. He simply kept the expression he had been wearing since he entered the chambers. They were expecting him to be vocal about the proposal but he said nothing. Not even a twitch of his skin occurred. I understand that something like a marriage could make the alliance between the two villages strong and ensure that they never betray each other. This also ensures that the alliance is long-lasting to even the next generation, Shikaku stated finally saying something. One could sense something coming though. But why Naruto specifically? Mei was honest with her answer, I like him. Tsunade sighed rubbing her temples. Thank you Mizukaj Dono. If you will excuse us while we decide on the matter. You can return to your hotel or take another tour around the village. I will inform call you once a decision has been made. Mei nodded and walked away from the chambers. She had given it the best she could. If they did not accept her offer, then she would have to live with it. The elder was one greedy bitch though. She wants other villages' bloodlines, but she does not want to give out her own. I think her demands are reasonable, Soom said. But we cannot accept the one about helping her village recover, the Inazuka matriarch spoke her own thoughts. Given that Naruto-san, who is one of us, helped free them, I believe we have done enough. Helping them to recover after helping free them will be giving too much, he or she stated stoically. But she did withdraw her offer to give us a Kegaya or a Yuki to create our own clan here in Konoha, Inoichi reminded the clan council of the fact. That is because someone had to open their big mouth, Tsunade said sending a hard glare at Kaharu. She stated that she was not interested in the Sharingan, Shibi said. That leads me to believe that any child she would have with Naruto-san would belong to Konoha. But she stated with a very interesting fact, she is a wielder of two bloodlines, Shikaku stated allowing the words to play inside their heads. We must also not forget that Naruto himself is a wielder of two bloodlines, very powerful bloodlines for that matter, the Sharingan and Mokuten. I wonder what sort of monster they will create. Homura thought aloud. What if by some chance they give birth to a child that possesses all four bloodlines? How powerful would that child be? Naruto was already really strong with only two of the bloodlines and he had not even reached his prime yet. Mei herself was a cage level shinobi with her bloodlines. Really, what monster would they give birth to? It does not matter. We know should we agree to this, their child will be strong, and we might even gain one of the Mizukage's bloodlines, Kaharu stated. So far we agree that the proposal is good, except for the part where we help Kiri recover, correct? The clan heads, except for Naruto who had been quiet nodded. What about our own demands and what we will give Kiri? I don't think that there is nothing that Kiri can give us at the moment. As the Mizuka just said, the alliance will be good for Konoha on the long run, Shibi stated his own thoughts. The others seemed to agree with him. Tsunade nodded and looked at Naruto. What do you have to say about it Naruto? Do you have any objections to the marriage should we accept the proposal? All the eyes turned to Naruto. It crossed everyone's minds that Naruto could simply say no to the marriage proposal. While Mei was a desirable woman, Naruto seemed not to care for that. I have no objections, Naruto answered calmly. There was some silence before Tsunade spoke again. I would consider this meeting over. But Jiraiya has informed me that Odogakur is being rebuilt and is nearly complete. I had known this for some time, but I wanted to get more information before presenting it to you. Otogakur. The same village that was created by that snake trader, Orochimaru. Tsunade nodded. A woman named Gurin is leading it. She was one of Orochimaru's most powerful subordinates, she paused for a moment. Naruto what do you know about it? What you know, Naruto responded. Oto is being rebuilt by a woman named Gurin. Before any of you gets any idea, we will not be acting against Oto. 
We will only do that if it does threaten us, until then, dismissed. Later that day, Uchiha compound, I have been waiting for you, Naruto heard as soon as he entered the house. He recalled the voice as Mei Terumi's voice. He walked in and saw her in the company of Sasuke. The Uchiha excused himself seeing him arrive. I am not surprised, Naruto said walking towards Mei. He stopped beside her and placed his hand on her shoulder surprising her slightly. But she did not say anything. Come with me, the blonde said and disappeared in a swirl of red flames. They appeared at Minato's house Mei looked around with a curious raised brow. What is this place? Another house that belongs to me, Naruto replied as he ushered her to the library. He sat down behind the desk and motioned for Mei to sit on the chair in front of the desk. You know it took much more convincing to get Ao and Chojuro to leave him alone at the compound. They did so only because they believed you would not do anything given that they had already seen you at Kiri. So when they return to fetch me they will be alarmed to see that I am not there, Mei stated looking at Naruto calmly. She was not worried though. She had told them she would return to their hotel. But knowing her bodyguards, they would return if they saw it getting late without her return. We won't take long. Where were you after the council meeting? Mei questioned looking straight at the blonde's eyes. Sasuke did not want to tell me. He is quite handsome by the way. I was busy here training someone, Naruto answered. He had been training Karen here at the training ground behind the house while the clones did some final additions on his own jutsu. Who? That is of no importance to you, Naruto answered. I trust Tsunade has informed you of Kanaha's decision. Mei frowned slightly. Yes, she said in a rather low tone. I was hoping that they would offer support in helping me with the recovery of Akiri. We really need help for the recovery. Have you signed anything? No, I was given some time to think things over, Mei smiled slightly. Well I am happy that you did not oppose to my marriage proposal. Sign it, Naruto said. It will be good on the long run. As for helping with the recovery, I might help with that. Mei noticed that Naruto brushed aside her comment on the marriage thing. How are you going to do it? And why? Technically I will not help you with that. That is your business to deal with no mine. But I like to expand my power to other lands, have more influence in the shinobi world in the years to come. Nonetheless, I have someone who can help you with what she can, it will be good for both you and her. What are you talking about? Oto, by now you must have heard that the village is being rebuilt. It's nearly finished by now. There are just doing some finishing touches left. I started that project as means to expand my power. After leaving here, you will go to Oto and speak with its leader about an alliance. Tell her that you were sent by me. Both of you can fix something, Naruto explained. You are behind Oto. Naruto did not admit to it nor deny it. So I am guessing Konoha does not know about it. That is true. Why tell me though? Aren't you afraid I might tell the Hokage about this? Naruto smiled slightly. Would you betray the man who freed your village? Would you betray the man who you want to marry? You are telling me this because you know I won't tell anyone. He was sure she would not tell a soul because she owed him and she liked him. He was much more sneaky than she thought. She did not think he would pull something like this off. Naruto did not respond he simply looked straight into her eyes. You are expanding your power. For what purpose really? Do you want to take over the world? You basically own Kiri, I'm guessing Konoha will follow soon. You now have Oto, for what purpose? She did not want to think that he wanted to take over the world and be a supreme ruler. Kiri already loved him. He had three villages on his palm, two being two of the five great villages and Konoha being the strongest. And now Oto. Those with power are the only ones people can listen to. When you have more power your impact on the world becomes greater. I already have power, but it will be greater with villages behind me. It seems to me like you plan on controlling the elemental nations. Not at all, Naruto said. If I wanted that, I would have told you would be taking orders from me as I was the one who freed Kiri. If you had refused, you could have been killed by remaining Yagura's forces. And I would have become Mizukage, I would have gone to Kumo. Use my Mokudan to subdue their Jinchurikis and summon the Kaiubi and allow it to destroy everything until the Rakage gets on his knees. The same could be said for any other village. That was possible, very much possible. Mei knew that. The Kaiubi was the strongest of the Biju and if Naruto could subdue the other village's Jinchuriki, the Kaiubi would destroy anything on its path. It nearly did that to Konoha. It can still be sealed, Mei said. 
It's possible, but to seal it you have to stop it from moving, hence the question, can you stop it from moving? Naruto questioned not expecting Mei to answer. Many villages tried to take the Kyubi for their own long ago but neither succeeded. The Kyubi is by far superior to any other biju. So far it has been sealed thrice. The first time Hashirama used Mokuden to subdue it, the second time it was just transferred to another host. The third time, it was a mixture of a special ability and Fuenjutsu to hold it back. Are you saying that no one can hold it back now? Someone can do it. Shinobi are full of surprises. But notice each time the Kyubi was alone when it was sealed. This time I would be there to ensure that no one attempts to do that. So you don't want to control the world. What do you plan? Let us leave it at that, Naruto stated. It was already late, he soon had to speak with Zetsu to see how things went in Suna. Mei nodded. So let us speak about our marriage. Is it just going to be a political marriage with no real interaction of a husband and a wife? She asked leaning to the desk. You seem eager about it. Well yes. I have been alone for a long time now and I am not getting any younger. Some intimacy and in being violated by you would be highly appreciated, the Mizukage stated with no shame. We could pick up from where we left before you left Kiri, she said in a sly tone and a charming smile. Conclude the terms of the alliance and sign it. Then you and I will talk. The omake had no effect on the story, whatsoever. It was just something the author did for a laugh. Naruto will get the Rinnegan, and the sickness serves a purpose. I am sure you will figure out why he has to die, that is if he does die. If you cannot figure it out, I will explain if it does happen. I am happy the last chapter was liked. Recently, I have been thinking that my video skills have dulled. This chapter also gave another piece of Naruto's mind about certain things. I had said that there will be a change in Naruto's character, but as of yet, there has been no change. But don't forget that I added that there won't be many changes in his personality. The changes that will be made will make him slightly happy. Thanks for listening I hope you guys liked it don't forget to subscribe and leave a like for more what ifs and support the author, see you guys in the next video.